there is no way on the face of the earth that you can place this kind of demand on historical narratives. If you attempted to subject other historical narratives to this kind of criterion, you, you simply would have none of them relating anything. But we're, uh, not, we're not talking about uh, Caesar crossing the Rubicon. We're talking about the most significant claimed event in world history. Certainly we are. And it this, doesn't happen every and day. And this highly significant event of world history is described by eyewitnesses and by close associates of eyewitnesses. And the overlap, the agreement, is about 95%. And where there isn't agreement, there is complementation. Thus, there certainly were guards there. There were certainly angels or messengers there. The guards were there at certain times, gone at certain times. The angels were there at certain times and not at others. The, the various people who came and witnessed this appeared at various times. You can, you can put these together. Let's take one of the other events. You say that there's a duplicity of authors, of, uh, and it's proven by the fact that in uh, the account about Mary, in talking to uh, the gardener, and it has to do with the fact of her uh, uh, turning, uh, where apparently when uh, the gardener is speaking to uh, Mary, who is really the Lord, she uh, speaks to him, and the Bible says she turns and she speaks to him. And then uh, the conversation goes on, and then Jesus says, uh, Mary, and mentions her name, and again she turns. Now you say that because the scripture, uh, and the writer there, uh, uses the word that she turned, and he says it two times, that therefore you know that we have two different authors or we have a conflict. Dis disjoints, I believe, is the well, hope I said, technical term. Hope I did not say that I know, ah, but all I can may, say. May I, may I quote uh, Nayland? Uh, Fine. Notice that ancient editing has resulted, not might have, could have, possibly did. Notice that ancient editing has resulted in several disjoints in the present text, such as Mary turning twice around to face Jesus during the course of a single uninterrupted conversation. Now the only conclusion for this, Mr. Nayland, is that, that nobody has a right to turn around in conversation with one other person. You are assuming that people have got to act in a certain way or they, uh, they, they never uh, operated historically at all. And, and really, uh, human beings are diverse and complicated, and human motivation is uh, very, very difficult to understand. And historians, when they come across events, don't go in with a kind of wooden metaphysical structure as to what people have got to do. What they try to do is to discover from the eyewitnesses what did happen. I mean, there's nothing in this universe that did not permit Mary, for reasons we don't know, to, to turn around and then turn back. Uh, and and, and if, if you go into the narratives that way, of course you're not going to get anywhere with them. But these narratives deserve more than you're willing to give them.